My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I give thanks to my God in heaven for the faith given to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. As we fast approach the Lenten tide and move through the biblical narrative from Christmas and the birth of Christ to his passion, death, and resurrection, we turn our attention this day to Jerusalem and the account of Simeon as Jesus was presented at the temple. Mary and Joseph, being obedient to the Mosaic laws of the Old Testament, now fulfill the presentation of Jesus with the biblical command as Mary rejoices in the firstborn, her son, Jesus. As we hear in the text for today in verse 23, every male who is first opens the womb shall be called the Holy One of the Lord. And now Mary and Joseph bringing Jesus to the temple to fulfill that Old Testament command and to give thanks to God for as in the Old Testament lesson with Hannah, God hearing the cries of his people, here Mary being chosen by God to bear the very sin bearer of the world, brings Jesus to the temple. Having stood myself, for those of you who were in Bible class last week, as I presented with my wife regarding our trip to Israel, having stood there at the first century stairs at the Temple Mount, reading this text for today, a connection was made for me. As Simeon would have stood on those first century stairs, awaiting Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, to come forth to the temple. As I told the Bible class, to my recollection of the knowledge of Jerusalem, I had not realized the steepness of Jerusalem, especially the Temple Mount, where there are many steps leading up to the Temple Mount. And it gives indication of many, many people over the years being on those first century steps. Simeon, as the text says in these words, Simeon, the man, was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. Simeon was touched by the Holy Spirit. And then later in the text it said, led by the Holy Spirit, Simeon went to the temple that day. You see, the promise to Simeon was this. Before you die, you would behold with your own eyes the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. You see, the consolation of Israel, as is said in the text, is truly the hope and comfort that we receive. The promise the Father gave to deliver to us a Savior of the world. The consolation of the world is Jesus, the Christ, the Son of God, Hope for all, comfort for many. Now today, if you go to the Temple Mount, over the years of conquest, you will see the archways to the actual Temple Mount have been blocked over. The actual two archways where all Jews would have entered year in and year out for the festivals. When the Crusaders took over, they closed in that Temple Mount and above, they used the top for their horses. But standing on those first century steps, one is transported to a point in time where you yourself have waited anticip with anticipation for a special event. Maybe it was your childhood years at Christmas as you sat on the stairs trying to catch someone leaving your gifts. Trying to stay awake as long as you could, anticipating the great joy of coming down and seeing a wonderful blessing. Simeon there on the stairs was waiting for something that we all celebrate today. Waiting for a promise that was many, many, many years in the waiting. There, Mary and Joseph and Jesus entered the temple. And the text says to us, And Simeon, brought by the child Jesus according to the law and custom, he took up the child in his arms and he declared what we now use as a liturgical song today, Simeon's song. Lord, now let your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, that you have prepared in the presence of all people a light for revelation to the Gentiles 
and the glory of the people Israel. So for all of you good Christian people, where do we usually use this text? Where is this song of Simeon normally used in the life of the church? Yes, it is on a Sunday morning in the divine service, but there is another event. It's the hallmark of this event where this text is used. And Barb, you can't say it because you were there yesterday. It is at a funeral. It is at the moment we celebrate the faith and life of God's people. According to the liturgical text, it is what we say at the committal of one of God's people as they are sent off to be in his presence. Lord, now let your servant depart in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. As Simeon declares, my eyes have seen the coming of the Lord, the Savior, Jesus, the Christ, the promise that we have all been waiting for. Now I can go. I can leave. Having seen your promise fulfilled. Simeon was made a direct promise by God that he would see the coming of the Savior. Jesus has promised us that he will return once again to take us to be where he is. That same anticipation that Simeon had there on the first century stairs at the Temple Mount at the possibility of today being the day that he saw the Messiah, the Son of God, the Savior of the world. God has fulfilled much as he did for Simeon, for us, the promise of a Messiah. He has given unto us the ability to see more than just what Simeon saw. Simeon beheld both physically and with his own eyes the Savior of the world. We celebrate today a Savior who has come, who has lived, who has healed, who has fed the hungry, who have made the lame walk, who have risen Lazarus from the dead, we celebrate a Savior who has gone to the cross, who has bled and died for us. We celebrate a Savior that at the very moment of his persecution, at the very moment of his betrayal, Jesus could have ran over the top of the Mount of Olives out into the desert and never been seen again. But Jesus' words to the Father, not mine, but thine be done. You see, my dear friends, we, like Simeon, have the blessing of seeing the fulfillment of God's promise of a Savior. We have the promise fulfilled in our lives. We rejoice at the gift that God has given to us. I asked the Bible class, and I'll ask you now, think about a moment in your life when you've called on God for something, something miraculous maybe, a healing, a deliverance from joblessness. Go down the list of what it could be in your life where God has heard the cry of his people. He has delivered unto you the request that you have asked of him. The question I have for you, did you sing a song like Simeon? Did you declare the joy in your heart of the fact that the Father has heard the cry of his people? Much like the people of Israel as they left Egypt after many hundreds of years of persecution and enslavery, they sang a song of joy only to cross the dry ground and to get on the other side and to quickly forget what they were leaving and the persecution they had and complain about the food that God would provide, they quickly forgot that the Father heard the cry of his people and delivered them out of Egypt. Don't be like the Israelites who quickly forget the promise of God fulfilled in your life. I told the Bible class this morning, I think one of the things we need to do much better in the church is to talk about the celebration and the declaration of the greatness of our God at hearing the cries of his people. God promised to do that which we could not. He delivered unto us his one and only son. Much like Hannah in the Old Testament lesson for today, and much like Mary, every male who first opens the womb shall be called the Holy One of the Lord. Jesus was the Holy One of the Lord, the consolation of the world, the hope and trust that we have that where we are strong, weak, he, my friends, is strong. Where we could not accomplish, Jesus comes alongside and delivers for us. In our moments of weakness, he strengthens us. In our moments of joy, he is the source. 
and even at moments of sadness like funerals, we can declare with joy in our hearts, Lord, now let your servant go in peace according to your word. For my own eyes have seen your salvation, that you have prepared in the presence of all people a light for the revelation of the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this song that we use in the liturgical setting, this song that we use in our funeral services, this is a song that's sung for ages upon ages in the church that God has heard the cry of his people. And oh, by the way, this picture you see before you of the old Simeon. One of the things I wanted to say about this is a lot of the commentators talks about the fact that we assume Simeon was old because he was prepared to go and be with the Lord. There is no biblical or textual proof that is that he was an older man like this, but we assume that that's the case. But can you imagine living your whole life and then there, whether it's a short life or a long life, there being given the promise that you were given to see the Savior. In any case, the man, the man Simeon, in his heart, rejoiced at the promise of God fulfilled. And know this, my dear friends, God hears your cries as well. He answers your prayers. He has given you his son, the one and only, the consolation of Israel, the hope and comfort of all people. Let that be your joy. Let that be your comfort this day as we celebrate the gift of God's love in our life much as Simeon did, Lord, now let your servants go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. Amen. May God the Father who gives us the great gift of his Son, may God the Son who gives us the great gift of his life and death, and may God the Holy Spirit continue to bless, guide, lead, and strengthen you now and forevermore. Amen.